Hello, senior parents, and welcome to virtual curriculum night for English 12. I'm Michael Polsonelli, for those of you who don't know me, um, and I, I'm really excited to teach the seniors this year in English. Um, to the parents of returning students who have already taken my course in English 9, welcome back. Um, and to the parents of students whom I haven't yet taught, I can't wait to get to know your students in a classroom setting a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to start off by saying that the purpose of English 12 is not really rocket science. Uh, we're going to read some literature, we are going to discuss it, and we are going to write about it. Um, and we're going to have a lot of fun doing that. Um, I always like to say in curriculum night that I am really lucky as the English 12 teacher because um, I have such strong colleagues in Mr. Patterson last year in Ms. Averill um, and in Dr. Eicher and even all the way back to uh, Mrs. Bryan for those of you who took English 7 with her that I don't really tend to find that I'm teaching new skills in English 12. Um, rather, I'm honing skills and, and just keeping sharp those skills that students already have. Um, and why? why? Why do that? Uh, what, what if um, I'm never going to go into, into English, Mr. Polsonelli? I always like to say, uh, even if you are not English bound in college or beyond, which is absolutely fine, uh, the, the, the thing I say is the ability to engage literature um, and to read it and to really dig into it to understand what the author is doing and to get something out of it is a skill that I believe leads to a more rewarding life um, and um, can apply not just to books but to other art forms as well. Um, so the idea of engaging art is something that I hope students do throughout their lives. Um, so don't worry, I'm not going to walk you through the syllabus for English 12. I generally find that uh, seniors can, can, can take care of themselves in terms of that. But if you ever have any questions about class policies or anything like that, you can take a look at the syllabus, which is in Schoology. Um, the couple of um, highlights that I would point out, however, um, one is with this year pretty likely leading to more absences, either because of quarantine or, or things like that with COVID, um, I just wanted to remind uh, students and parents that uh, if there's any absence for any reason, whether that's school sponsored, college visit, quarantine, sickness, just to have your students communicate with me as soon as possible. Um, if that's ahead of time, that's great. Um, if it's not as soon as possible as they can get to their email after a sickness, and I will work out a makeup schedule with them. But I always like to hear from the students uh, first, if possible. Um, the other thing I like to say to my parents is, um, you know, if, if you do have to step in, make sure that your students are doing their English work uh, in a really distraction-free, social media-free, and phone-free space. Um, the reason for that is this is not like pleasure reading when you're when you're tired right before you go to bed. This is not like picking up, you know, like the latest Harry Potter um, or something like that. Um, rather, uh, studying literature should be done at a table or a desk or something like that, taking notes and really studying. And I always say um, that's very different from reading. Um, a, you know, a book right before bed or something like that. It's no less enjoyable. It's just a different kind of enjoyment. I always find when students can get to the end of a reading and be like, man, my notes kick butt. I read, I read that so well. Bring on a quiz, Polsnelli. I find that feeling to be really uplifting and really powerful. Um, so my favorite thing to do in curriculum night, though, is to show you what you're, we're going to read, uh, because that to me is the most exciting part of, of the whole year. Um, so hopefully you've seen these two books, right? And I don't know if you're seeing these titles backwards or what, but um, on Zoom. But in any case, uh, we read The Interpreter of Maladies and The House of the Spirits for summer reading. Um, with first semester being male author heavy a little bit, um, I wanted to concentrate on some female authors. And speaking of that, this course originally way back in the day, you know, a number of years ago, it started out as British literature. But over the years, um, I've been working in books from other cultures. And so now it's kind of this like melding of British literature and world literature. I would say that semester one is more British literature, sort of the roots of the British language, the roots of the English language, and that um, semester two would be more world literature, um, more works in translation and things like that. Um, so we're going to go back to the very beginning, the earliest works in English, and we're going to study some old English. Um, I won't make students read Beowulf 
in Old English, which is a story about this like kind of really powerful dude who fights monsters and things like that. Um, and it's written in Old English, which is kind of like a foreign language. Uh, we'll do a translation, but we will study the Old English a little bit. I'll make them memorize a little bit. They always enjoy that. Um, some actually do, right? But um, that, that's a fun read. We'll move on to some Middle English with the Canterbury Tales. Um, again, I will let them read a, a modern English translation of that, although we will study the Middle English a little bit so they get a good sense of what English sounded like a couple of thousand years ago all the way up till today. Okay. Um, of course, in a, a class that studies some British literature, we're going to have to do some Shakespeare. And why not do um, arguably his most famous play? Let's do Hamlet. Um, so, so quite an enjoyable one. Um, it's, a, it's a messy play. And that's what I like best about it. Um, a, lot of, a lot of questions and not a lot of answers in Hamlet. And then to round off the semester, we're going to do um, a number of poems. Uh, so lyric poetry, stuff that's shorter and that fits on a page, generally speaking. And we will really analyze the heck out of those poems. I'll really show them some poetry analysis skills, some of which they already have. But again, we'll hone those skills. We'll, we'll make them nice and sharp so that no student has to be afraid of a poem in the future. Um, I don't have a text of the poems that we study, and so that one's uh, no visual aid on that one. And that's kind of going to take us up into December, um, hopefully, you know, based on, uh, you know, if we're in person, hopefully, or whether we're connected either way. Semester two, uh, we're going to stick with the British Isles. I do like to do a book of short stories, and I chose Dubliners by James Joyce, and so written in English, but by an Irish author. Um, and these wonderful kind of like, you know, five to 10 page short stories that are really, really dense and really, really packed with some excellent, excellent stuff. Um, again, depending on the timing, I'm going to try to fit in Things Fall Apart, wonderful a book written in English, but um, from a Nigerian author. Um, uh, it's kind of like a Greek tragedy, but in, in modern Africa is the idea of Things Fall Apart. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that book. Uh, I always like to do one nonfiction book. Now, this is an interesting nonfiction book. It's called Running in the Family by Michael Ondaatje. He's the guy who wrote The English Patient, if you've heard of that book or movie. Um, and this is his memoir. Um, and so in theory, it's nonfiction, although what I love about that book is he writes it in a very fictionalized way. So that'll be a fun way for students. Students will not just do novels. They're going to do some poetry. They're going to do a play. They're going to do some short stories. And then they're even going to do some, some technically nonfiction. And then we're really going to branch out. Now we're talking about fourth quarter. Um, we're going to read an American work, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Wonderful book. And we're going to read it like we always do and analyze it. But then what I find so much fun, um, we're going to watch the film version of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, uh, award-winning film version, because I'm going to want to start showing them that the analysis skills that they've been working on the whole time at Seabury apply not only to books, but they can also apply to film. And so we'll write a nice essay comparing the book and the film. And then by the time we get into May, when they're really kind of burnt out and they're kind of like, okay, let's finish this high school thing. Um, I'm going to throw at them a unit that is not books at all. I'm going to have them show their analysis skills when it comes to famous paintings, famous architecture, uh, and famous sculptures. And so my point there is to show them, even though those aren't you know, literature works, those aren't English books, I want to show them that looking for symbolism or looking you know, for imagery or looking for all these things and that they're so good at finding themes applies not only to ink on a page, but to any art form. And uh, so we're going to concentrate on vi visual art so I can hopefully show them that. And that's a wonderful way. I experimented with that a number of years ago. And I find that that's a really wonderful way to end the year to show them that they have this skill that will apply to many areas of life. Uh, so that's the point of English 12. And um, I think it's going to be a blast. So thank you um, for spending a few minutes with me. Um, and I'll hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye.